Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. I'm excited. Today, we have Jeffrey Eisenberg, founder of BuyerLegends.com. He's an authority and pioneer of internet marketing strategy. Essentially, he helps people convert more sales in e-commerce and convert more leads and demand generation. Everyone wants that. He's the co-author of books Call to Action and Waiting for Your Cat to Bark, which were Wall Street Journal, Business Week, USA Today, and New York Times bestsellers. And the newest book is, I'm excited to, to dive into this, Jeffrey, is Buyer Legends Executive Storyteller's Guide. And essentially, it's the culmination of decades of trying to get stuff to always work and now you figured out how to put in 5% effort and get 60% of the results. So we'll talk about that. And in 1998, you co-founded Future Now that helped businesses such as HP, NBC, GE, Overstock, and Google generate more leads, subscriptions, and sales with the framework you co-invented called Persuasion Architecture. Jeffrey, thanks for joining me. Oh, you're welcome. It's a pleasure. So... Jeff, I always ask, since it's Inspired Insider, about one of your lowest moments and then how you push through it. Because there are those low moments, even though you work with big companies. And then on the flip side, one of your I, I, one of your I'll, proudest I'll, I'll moments. I'll give it to you. We, yeah. were, we were dead broke. We went ahead and took the last company that we were involved in, the future now, okay, um, we took that company and we did a reverse merger to go public. We were turning our wow. consulting service into a SaaS model. Um, it was actually starting to turn successful, okay? But we did that in October of 2008. And so... Not good timing, um, yeah. If you were looking for funding, and, and, and we figured that we were going public because that, that would be a way to get more funding, um, that was not the time to be looking for funding. I mean, we went dead broke. I mean, you know, we weren't taking salaries, we put money in, we, it was, it was a terrible time. Um, it hadn't been the first time we'd lost another, another time we'd been in a business and a partner had, a, you know, had a, literally robbed us, wow. um, closed the door on us. So I've had this happen twice. I mean, you know, I've, I've been, had something going really successfully. Yeah. Low points are part of the equation. Yeah. Um, you don't know what the high points are if you don't hit the lows. Right. I mean, someone who's listening who may be in that situation now, how did you push through mentally? Because you, know, you, you know what? You don't push through. I don't want, I don't want to give happy talk. Yeah, okay? I don't want happy talk. Oh, I, want yeah, the I want the real deal talk. Yeah. It sucks. Yeah. Okay. And you can like, I want to hear if you were depressed in a corner for six months and then finally no, someone no, slapped you or something. No, but I don't yeah. want to look at somebody who is depressed in a quarter of six months and say there's something wrong with them. Yeah, I agree. I, I, so, um, well, just what was your method to you know, eventually get to? Because it's, I don't know, I would I, think. I, I, I'll, I'll tell you, one of the things is once we unwound ourselves from the company, because we walked away from it and, um, you, you, you know, we didn't walk away with, with a lot of money, but we were able to walk away, okay? Um, and, and the company survived. For a few years, I I don't think it's still in existence, but it's survived for a few years without us. Um, we actually went back and said we actually focused on our health. And and Brian lost over a hundred pounds. I wow. started doing some exercise, started losing some weight. I didn't lose as much as him, but I've I've definitely slimmed down um, and started doing some exercise and yeah. I worked on my relationships because what happens during those times is all the stuff you let slip are your relationships and your health. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's really hard to get good with the universe when you're not good with you. Yeah. Um, that wound up really being the focus. I like that. Yeah. Uh, and I don't have any magic words. If, no, if, I if, like if that. One of yeah. the listeners is in yeah. I just, I just want to tell them, man, I know how bad it sucks. I know how bad it sucks to lose. I know how bad it sucks to do something that you're sure is going to work and doesn't work. Right. Um, you know, when we were building Future Now, I can still remember, you know, high-fiving the first time. This is a cool story. Yeah. The very first time that we got a newsletter subscriber, okay, yeah. whose email we didn't recognize. Right. Okay. <laughs> I Everything love those moments. Exciting, yeah. Right. 
Um, you know, and these days, you, you know, Brian's building, a, 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 is very involved in building a company called Ideal Spot. He's actually actively their CMO. I'm an investor and I do some business development, but very early stage startup. They're still, um, you, you know, they're still um, um, looking for their seed round, but it's idealspot.com. And what it does is it chooses a real estate location for you. Basically, you, you put in a real estate location that you are interested in putting a, a, a store in. And it will give you the risk factor for it. It's a so great it's a name. Play. It's a great name. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Um, and so, um, and you know, and we're building Buyer Legends um, to be um, more of a training company. We don't actually have a, an exact plan for what it's going to be when it grows up, but it's going to be its own thing. Yeah. Um, and so, we're building businesses, and you know, we we are able to survive because of all the hard work we put into building reputation, right? So yeah. it takes a lot of effort and a lot of investment to build New York Times bestsellers, right? Everybody's a bestselling author, but do they actually get on a list? Um, you know, we did a lot of free speaking. Now we do mostly paid speaking. Right. We did consulting to almost anybody and anybody until we figured out how to get good at it so we could work with companies, whether they were big or small, it would succeed. Yeah. There's so much experimentation um, you, you know, just two weeks ago, I looked at all the content that we were building for Buyer Legends and said, ah, the book's okay, but the rest of this is crap. And, you know, if you go look at the blog, you can make a determination for yourself. I think that some of it is okay, but we wanted to set a much higher standard. And so I can tell you that if you went and subscribed to BuyerLegends.com, you'll actually notice an improvement in the content over the next few weeks. Yeah. Okay. But it was still that moment where we said, I can't believe I'm doing this. This is what it means to be an entrepreneur, right? right this is this yeah. is this is what it takes. I don't have somebody externally who tells me what to do, okay? But I'm the one who gets to judge and feel bad. Yeah. Uh, on the other hand, I want to tell you an observation I made to Brian today. Yeah. Um, sometimes there's a curse of knowledge that applies to entrepreneurs. Okay, and remember, I said there are no shortcuts, but very often times, you're being really hard on yourself, and good enough is good enough. I see. Yeah. Okay, you know, I'm not thinking that is minimal viable product, although I I love the concept because sometimes that's what you need. I I just think that minimal is the wrong word, right? Because viable is where the young fish should be, right? right? Because yes. You, you you can't strip everything out of it and still have it be a viable product. Yeah. But um, oftentimes, just knowing too much stops you from doing stuff, right? So there's real value in just doing it, right? It's why I don't know exactly. BioLegends is going to be some sort of training company or maybe some sort of membership site or it might be something along the lines of the SaaS that we were building before where, um, where we amplify the consulting services we do behind a lot of technology so that you can, so that we can magnify the amount of time we spend, but by spending less time, right? Giving mm -hmm. more value for less time. Yeah. I could be a bunch of these things. And I'm also experienced enough not to really be worried about yeah. it. Because what You're I know open is to, if yeah. we manage the input, this is a sort of an important principle is yeah. if you focus on doing what's right, which is, giving people value, right? Teaching them how to do this, right? Yeah. Somewhere or another, the output will be good, right? It might be consulting, it might be training, it might be any of these things. But if you don't focus on the input, you're sort of focusing on the output. See, if you focus on sales, I could sell a bunch, but then there'd be nothing left, right? I'm focused on the product on the actual thing that's valuable to customers. And that's right. why I was disappointed in our content. Right. right? So keep focusing on building something valuable. Yeah. Okay. Um, and that's, that's important. Yeah. So Jeffrey, what's been one of the, you look back on your career, what's been one of the proudest moments? Um, proudest moment. Yeah. So I mentioned wizard Academy. And um, I was very inspired by my mentor, and he happens to be one of my best friends, uh, Roy Williams. He built a, a 32-acre campus. He's built all this stuff. And very early on in the academy, he had invited us to come speak and teach a class there. And I've got to tell you, out of all of those moments, 
the idea that he would say, would you teach these people? I mean, I just remember standing there the first time and being really choked up and barely able to speak because I was yeah. um, for clout. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's just like I was really, really just overwhelmed and awed by this idea that I would be standing there and these people would be listening to me like they were listening to my mentor. Um, yeah, that's that awesome. was a really proud moment. Um, yeah. Another one was when we hit the New York Times bestseller list for the first time, we self-published that book. Yeah. And we actually, look, we worked hard thinking maybe we had a remote chance, you know, like, like you know, if, if hell froze over just a little bit, right, <laughs> just a little thin sheet of ice, we could get it. Um, and we just outstripped all expectations. Um, but those are big moments. I'll tell you, they're, they're really, really, the, the moments, I told you the one before, yeah. It's the one where people touch my heart when they heard me say something yeah. or they read something and they come and they come to me, they come up to me and they say, hey, Jeffrey, you know, if it wouldn't be for this, I wouldn't have succeeded in this. If I can actually, whenever I actually impact people's lives in yeah. any positive way, um, there are lots of little proud moments. They outstrip all those other ones. Yeah. No, I love that. It is, yeah. So if, you, if, if if you come see me speak someplace, please come do that because that like makes makes it worthwhile. Yeah.